Hi, I'm Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. Well, in this episode of Building the Bushi Dory, we're going to be working on the garbirds again. In the last episode, we made the garbirds, we installed them. In this episode, we're going to trim them and fair them out, and then we're going to put fiberglass on them. And here's a spoiler, in the next episode, we're going to be working on the garbirds again. Well, the reason for that is because in a flat bottom boat, the bottom and the garbirds really make up the backbone of the boat. So it stands to reason they're going to take a lot more time. Once we get these done though, we're going to start moving ahead with a lot more speed. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. Let's get down to work. Okay, that was a really successful glue up. Everything went together nicely. Everything fit. The cleanup went really nicely. It's been about 24 hours now. I can start removing all of these fasteners. This epoxy is going to hold everything together just fine. Now this joint here at the chine, it's a little on the small side for my liking. And so I think it needs a little bit more reinforcement. I'm going to sheath the whole bottom of this boat in fiberglass. I could get away with not doing that. If that were the case, I'd want to make sure I at the very least seal the end grain of this plywood with unthickened epoxy. But on the inside, I would probably add a good generous fillet to give it extra structure. There's just not a lot of meat in this joint. Chances are good it would hold together just fine for the rest of its life but I like to err on the side of caution. Another alternative to sheathing the whole bottom is just putting a piece of fiberglass tape across the chine. And that's fine too. The only trick there is it takes a lot more effort to fair it out so that it isn't noticeable. Let's get all these fastenings out and then we're gonna trim off all this excess plywood around the chines, down the stem and transom. We used fender headed screws to attach this planking, but on this side we didn't bother using these fender washers and I think that was a mistake. There's a few spots where those screws have left depressions which we're going to have to deal with before we fiberglass. Now before driving any of these fasteners in, we made sure to coat them really well in wax. I make my own wax paste for this sort of application using beeswax and turpentine. Any furniture wax will work fine. Another really good alternative actually is to get a wax toilet bowl ring. It's a nice sticky soft wax that you can just keep that ring easily available and you just drop screws into it. We can also remove our buttons. little nap there in the spirit will clean up that wax and now we can move on to trimming the bottom. We want a nice soft round over for that fiberglass to wrap around. So let's give ourselves a line to follow and let's knock that corner off.
Now I just want to bevel off the end of these garbage planks a little bit. I'm going to be putting a cut water on here and I need a little bit of space for that fiberglass cloth to wrap around the end of the planks and still not interfere with the lay of the cut water. This little bit of a bevel will take care of that. Now while I totally trust epoxy to hold this boat together, I also really like to have a few mechanical fastenings. So we're just going to throw a few in before we put the fiberglass cloth on. Alright folks, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching so far. And I also want to thank all my followers on Patreon. It's because of them that this channel is possible. If you can help me out over there, I really appreciate it. You can find links in the description or floating around up here somewhere. There's something you can click on. You can try that too. Okay, let's get back to work. Okay, we're ready to start putting some fiberglass on this boat. I've filled all the voids and sanded them off. I've given the whole bottom a good vacuuming. Marked off where the plank lap is going to be for the next plank, which is three quarters of an inch up from the edge. Now I'm just going to carefully tape along that line. This tape is going to be where my fiberglass terminates. taping off the stem because I want to be able to trim away the extra thickness of fiberglass so that my cut water can go over top. I'm also taping off the transom where it meets the garbage planks. Okay, now I've never try doing what I'm about to do exactly. So what I think I'm going to just lay this cloth back off one half, coat out that end grain, and then lay the cloth back down. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. Mostly I'm afraid of trimming this, pulling it back, and then trying to reposition it, which can always be tricky. If you want to tape your cloth in place, make sure you put a little pull tab on the end of your piece of tape by folding it over. And make sure when you're peeling it off that it's peeling off in a direction that holds the cloth in position, not pulls it away from the boat. Wetting out the end grain of the garbage planks is going to help me in two ways. First, it's going to make sure that these areas aren't starved of epoxy when I go to glass the rest of the boat. Secondly, it's going to hold the fiberglass cloth in place while I trim it. Now, I don't claim to be an expert at fiberglassing, but I believe there are three elements to success. Organization, cleanliness, and patience. Organization starts the day before I'm going to fiberglass. That means if I need mixing pots, I'm going to go get them. If I need solvent and rags, I'm going to go get them. And if my epoxy is stored in a cool location, I want to bring it out into the room that I'll be glassing in so that it comes up to room temperature. There's a phenomenon called thermal outgassing. What that means is that there's air trapped in the surface of your materials, in this case plywood. And as the room temperature rises, that air wants to expand and leave the surface of the plywood. How that affects us is while you're fiberglassing, little tiny air bubbles will want to pass through the epoxy and basically leave a little stippled finish on the surface of your cloth. Now there's a simple way to combat this, and that is by working in falling temperatures. So what you can do is you can raise the temperature in your room, and then before you start glassing, you turn the heat off, and the temperature should start falling while you're working. Another way to do this is to just wait until midday when the ambient temperature in the environment around you is naturally going to start to fall, and start glassing then. That's what I typically do. In order to work efficiently, I like to estimate how much epoxy I'm going to use and pre-pump the resin in small batches in mixing pots ahead of time. I add my hardener to those pots as I need it, and I use my drill press set on a low speed with a mixing wand to help mix the epoxy. If you get the setup just right, it'll spin your pot around like this and help get it all mixed up thoroughly. I primarily use West System epoxies, and when wetting out fiberglass cloth, I use their 105 resin and their 207 special coatings hardener. 
The 207 hardener has UV inhibitors in it, which is vital if you want to use a varnish finish over top of this. I'm using it because it has a longer open time and lower viscosity, which makes it a lot easier to wet out the cloth with. Now I like to work in relatively small batches. And with the West Systems pump system, you're looking at about a 6 to 10 pump batch right here. So that's covering about a third of the bottom, and it's going to cover one side for that same length. When I'm about halfway squeegeeing that out, I'll go over to the drill press and get another batch going so that it's ready to roll when I need it. I usually hold off on pre-pumping what I think will be my last batch so that I can more accurately estimate how much I really need once I get there. Another aspect of organization is just thinking about the sequence of events that are going to occur. For instance, at the stem, I need to overlap two layers of fiberglass. So in order to do that successfully, I want to make sure one side is wetted out and well squeegeed out so that's good and glued down before I try and work on top of it with the other side. If you try and do both at once, it usually ends up being a total mess and you're fighting with yourself back and forth trying to get both layers to lay down nicely. Cleanliness. I cannot stress this enough. Given half a chance, epoxy will get absolutely everywhere. Clean off your workbenches and sweep your floor, and have something disposable you can put your sticky tools down on, like some cardboard or butcher paper. I even should have put away those clamps you see hanging there on the mold, because I probably dripped epoxy on those. Wear two layers of gloves so you can peel one off when one of them gets too messed up. Or make sure you keep those hands clean while you work. And I guarantee you, without fail, you're probably going to drop your squeegee at some point, just like I did right here. In that event, you want to make sure you have another squeegee on hand, or at least a rag and solvent so that you can clean that up and keep working. You certainly don't want a floor covered in sawdust that you just drop that into. Patience. Patience is so important. You can only do so much at any one moment. It takes a while for the epoxy resin to soak into the fiberglass cloth. You need to give it that time. That means getting it well coated and then moving on to other parts of the boat while it saturates. You gotta keep coming back every now and then and make sure that you don't have any dry spots. I tend to work on the boat in quarters so that I got one area that's sort of moved along ahead of others and I keep moving my way around the boat one step at a time. One bit's getting fully completed while another bit is just getting started. And this way the whole job gets done in a nice, even, thorough and organized manner. And when I'm done I can walk away with a clear conscience that I did it all very well. The most important element is your final squeegeeing. You need to make sure that it's firm enough that you're removing all the excess resin from the surface of the cloth without starving the surface of the cloth. So it takes sort of a delicate touch. In the next scene you'll see what it should look like when it's done properly. It should have sort of a matte finish with no glossy spots showing pooling epoxy. This epoxy now is dry to the touch, but it's still green. And so if I press real hard there's a slight tackiness to it. What we're doing is we're trimming back the epoxy at my tape line while it's still in the green state.
Now normally we would add extra coats of epoxy at this stage to start filling out the weave of the fiberglass cloth, but I decided I wanted to cut the gains and the bevels on the garbage plants first. We'll take care of that in the next episode. Well that's it for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when the next video is out, and I will see you later.